This tutorial will show a process for modeling and animating the twisting of a pair of wires. We will start with a helix that represents the center line of one of the twisted wires. So here we have the helix. We can see that it has two radii, both of the same magnitude, 1.25 millimeters, a height of 100 millimeters, and six turns going in a clockwise direction. We'll start by creating a circle and I'd like a circle to have a radius of 1.25 and we're going to um, call that circle circle A. So we have helix A and circle A. If I look at the helix and go to the utilities panel measure we'll see that the length of the helix is 110.5 millimeters. Remember that number it'll come in handy later. All right, first thing we're going to do is select the circle and apply to it an extrude modifier. And I'm going to set the length to something more than 110, so I'll just say 120. We're now going to also associate with it a path to form modifier. So I'll scroll down here to path to form and for the path I'm going to pick the helix. It looks kind of funny. That's because in the extrude case we only have one segment. If I increase that number to say let's say four we get a little bit more correlation between the cylinder I mean to the extruded circle and the helix. Let's make that number even larger. 20 looks pretty good, looks better anyway. 50 looks fairly smooth. We could do 100 and it'd be very smooth, but that might be excessive. So we want a number, I'll put 60 in there, that looks smooth enough, but uh, not too much detail. If we go to wireframe, you can see how much detail is in the, uh, in the extrusion. So let's go back to default shading. And the next thing we'd like to do is uh, to create a dummy object. So we'll go back to create, helpers, dummy. I'm going to put my dummy object right about there and we're going to go to the animate panel and control its position with a path constraint. We'll pick the path which in this case is the helix and we are also going to uh, set the follow option for that dummy. So as we scrub the timeline we can see the dummy follow the helix tilting and rotating to be aligned with the tangent vector to the uh, to the uh, helix. All right let's zoom in here and what we might do at this stage is I'd like to correlate the location of the dummy to how much of the extrusion we are doing along this path. What I'd like to do is select the uh, extruded circle with the to path to form modifier on it. Right click on it and go to wire parameter and I would like to take the model extrude amount and correlate that to the location of the dummy object transform position percent. We are going to use the dummy object to drive so I'm going to use the arrow pointing to the left the amount of the extrusion the percent value changes from 0 to 0.1 as we move along the helix. So I'm going to multiply that by our 110.5 value. So we'll connect the two and see how that works. So I'll we'll put it down here and I'm going to hit connect. And now you can see as I scrub the timeline, the uh, helix grows according to the position of the dummy object. Okay. Now as this moves around in space, what I'd like to do is have a continuation of this wire that has yet to be consumed into the helical shape. So I'm going to do that by creating a cylinder. So we'll go to our solid standards and uh, grab a solid cylinder. And I'm going to create a cylinder here and modify it to a radius of our 1.25 and a height 
something at least 110. I'll set it to be, let's say, 120. So we'll take that, and I want to position it. So I'll use a line to the dummy object, position it x, y, z, and orient it x, y, z. It's not quite the orientation I want, so what I'd like to do is rotate it. I'm going to go to a local coordinate system and rotate it. And here we can see what we'd like to do is rotate it by about the y-axis by 90 degrees. All right, so that looks like a nice continuation of our helix going straight out into space. So we'd like to link the cylinder to our dummy. So as we scrub the timeline, the two move together. But in this case, we see that the cylinder is always the same length. And what we'd really like to see happen is that the cylinder gets consumed as we move along the helix. So I'm going to set up another wire parameter. This time I'm going to select the cylinder, right click on it, go to wire parameter. We're going to take the object height of the cylinder and correlate that to the position, transform position percent of the dummy object. Again, we're going to let the dummy object drive, oops, I didn't mean to do that. We're going to take the percent of the dummy object and we're going to drive the height. And we're going to multiply that height by 110.5, okay? But we'd like it to be consumed. So instead of growing as we move the dummy object along the helix, we'd like that to shrink. The maximum value, let's say, is going to be 120. So we'll have a little bit left over when the dummy moves completely to the end. Let's see how that works out. So we'll come over here. We'll connect the percent of the dummy to the height of the cylinder. And we'll hit the connect. And now as we scrub the timeline and we get to the end, notice that we just have a little bit left over. That's the difference between 120 minus 110.5 is what's left over. For some consistency here, what I'd like to do is take this cylinder and change its name from cylinder 001 to A. So we have circle A, helix A, uh, extruded circle A, and we have our cylinder A. So we have some consistency there. What happened here at the end? Did I move something? Do, 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 do. Looks like I, this has to be, let's realign that. I made a mistake. Let's align that to this x y z and we'll say okay apply, apply okay and now does it work right yeah i must have just misaligned it all right that looks good let's just double check that so now we can take this and that and uh, set them to be the same color So you can see that works out nicely. All right. So once we have that, we can open up our uh, Scene Explorer. And we'll select the dummy, the cylinder A, circle A, and the helix. We'll take all those components and use Control-V to make a copy of all the components. Now the copy is helix A001. I'm going to change the name of that to helix B. And we could do the changing the names of the other objects as well. But we'll just leave, well, let's do that. Circle A would become circle B. And uh, we'll select helix B, which is our copy. And we'll go to uh, world coordinates and rotate it by 180 degrees about Z. So let's go 180 degrees. And now we have our second wire. 
and for clarity what I might do is select it and the its other mating part and change the color of those two components to uh, let's say a rose color like this and now we can, can clearly see the two wires so we hit play we can see the wires twisting together that looks pretty good one other thing you might do is a different way of looking at this is we also have the option of going back to our dummy object and let's say uh, we'll take dummy one which is really we want to call it dummy a it's good to have good uh, consistent naming when you're working on these kind of things and dummy a will select oh, that's going to be dummy b so dummy a is here we're going to select that go to the motion tab change it follow to turn that off and I'm going to select cylinder A and rotate it by the x-axis by 90 degrees let's do that and we can take the dummy B and on that one also take off the follow option and rotate that cylinder by 180 degrees about x no excuse me 90 degrees about x and now what we see is the two wires being twisted like that if we'd like to fill this gap what we could do is create a create a, a sphere I'll do a geosphere and we'll place it right there and set its radius to 1.25 okay so that's geosphere we're going to associate that with cylinder this is cylinder B let's label it as such this is cylinder A so let's go to cylinder B let's label it as such and uh, we will take this and position it with respect to cylinder B X Y Z apply OK and I want to link that to cylinder B so we'll go by name here it might be easier cylinder B should be under here we'll link it to that and we've got that selected this selected and that part we make sure they're all the same color okay you can see we filled in that gap we might do something similar for the other uh, wire and as we scroll back and we hit the scrub line we can see we have our twisted wires okay and that's all there is to it thank you